Hello, fishy folks, and happy Sunday fun day, and Merry Christmas to you. It's Christmas Eve. Um, here in the Michaels Fish Room household, there are plenty of gifts under the tree, and Santa hasn't even come yet. The tradition here is uh, everyone gives everyone presents. Mom and Dad give the most, obviously. And then Santa comes and really doubles up on their presents. So that's that. Merry Christmas to everyone. Uh, let's talk about breeding for profit. I'm down in the fish room this morning early, and uh, I've got two tanks drained on the uh, rack that's over there, and uh, this tank uh, right here now has the American koi guppies in it. I just shut that light off to do this uh, video. There was quite a bit of glare off my head, and look, there's some something, something there. What is that? All right, that's gone. Sorry about the glare, right? Anyway, breeding for profit. How'd I do this year? I get the question I get asked most besides, are you married? No, the question I get most is, uh, what's the best fish to sell to make money? I can't answer that question. And here's why. What's best for me is probably not what's best for you. And here's why. The water in my area is moderately hard and is easily modified to hard water by adding crushed coral or something like that. So keeping live bears, which is what I keep, is quite easy in my area. If you go a couple hours east of here or west of here, um, the water is very soft. Not very soft, but soft. Uh, my live bears will struggle there because they like hard water. So what I breed here might not be what's best for you to breed where you are. You, you need to figure that out on your own. And I'm going to try to help you with that. First thing is when you walk into your local fish store or stores, are they all, you know, soft water type fish with like one tank of guppies just in case? Or are they all live bearers doing well? That's kind of how you got to figure it out. Um, but... The other thing, which I tell people all the time, is you gotta build that relationship with the local fish store staff and owner. Most importantly, the staff. And here's why. If you aren't friendly with the staff, when you walk in and you say, hey, is Mr. Manager around or is the owner around? The staff, if the staff don't like it, they'll be like, nope, he's busy. Or they're gonna pretend they're gonna walk in the back, make fun of you, come back out. Nope, not here. Doesn't want to talk to you. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta build that relationship with the staff. Now, most staff in local fish stores are friendly, right? They're customer service. Um, usually, you have something in common with them, and you can easily start up a conversation with them and become friendly. Um, don't walk into a local fish store, never having been there before, and ask to sell them fish. That probably won't work unless they're desperate or you have something really rare that you're selling really cheap and they want it. That's the other thing. They have to want the fish you breed. Don't start breeding platies if they don't sell in your area. Don't start breeding angels if they can get angels for a quarter of a piece somewhere because you're going to lose your shirt. So what's the best fish to sell? It really depends on you, the area you live in and what sells in your area. I can tell you that my black panda platies or black panda guppies uh, sell the most for me online. Um, I don't know why. I like them. Um, I don't know if it's because people know they're from Aquarium Co-op and they want that line. Um, and Corey's not selling them anymore online, so I, I don't really know why they sell that well. But it doesn't matter to me. I've made sure I have enough stock uh, from them. For them to sell so um, but what's the most profitable fish to sell to my local fish store um, layer tail mollies because and here's why my local fish store will only pay me what he pays what he can buy them for from his suppliers and he buys them dirt cheap you know he buys a guppy for 50 cents well I'm not gonna sell him a, a you know, an expensive strain of guppy for 50 cents. I will sell a mutts or fancies um, if I have enough of them, but I don't actively breed them to sell them to his fish store. I do actively breed some layer tail mollies, some platies, because I don't, I can't really sell them online. 
and make a ton of money unless you really want them. And I want to keep the relationship of the ability to sell to him open. Um, I've sold him some angels, but he, you know, he's got people that that walk into his store with a hundred angel fry, you know, and want twenty five bucks or want you know three packs of blood worms. I, I don't want that. I want money, you know, decent money too. So that's another thing about breeding for profit. You have to build a relationship and know ahead of time how it's going to work. If you walk into the store and say, uh, what do you give me for these fish? They're going to lowball you. That's business. So you need to walk in with a number in mind. And here's a good train of thought. 30% <clears throat> of their selling price. Most local fish stores triple their the cost to sell the fish. This way, if there's loss, they can cover it. Uh, you know, if if the fish are small, they have to feed them a little bit more, they can cover it. So if they buy, if they're selling a guppy for six bucks, they're probably buying it for two. Now, my local fish store only double stuff. So that's why his prices are the same prices since 1982 when he opened. I think a pair of guppies is less than three dollars for a pair which is why i don't sell to him i do buy some stuff from him and then breed them and make a crap ton of money but that's called breeding for profit um so that's a good rule of thumb it's not set in stone and most local fishers probably won't tell you what they pay for stuff whereas mine shows me the list every week is there anything you want if i go in there and say hey what's on the list I'm looking for some fish. He'll tell me and show me, no problem. And then, you know, whatever he charges me, he charges me. It's just part of business, right? Um, so, what fish will sell well for you? I can't answer that. You need to do that work. The second most important thing, actually the, the most important thing, is uh, the relationship. I know I can walk into my local fish store unannounced with fish, and he'd probably take them. I know he would take them, actually. Um, but I don't do that, right? Um, I know what he pays for fish. He definitely gives me discounts. But there has to be a respect there. And they have to trust you. So you got to build that relationship ahead of time. Um, one of the pieces of advice that Corey gave me, actually he gave all of us if you watch his videos, um, was let's say you're breeding angels. Take a bag of angels, say 10, walk into the store and say, after after you've built some sort of relationship and say hey listen these are like dime or quarter size angels that i have in my local in my uh fish room and i'm breeding them what i want to know is if they'll sell in your store so here take these 10 i'll be back next week here's my card it's got my phone number my email if you have a a youtube or you have a you know facebook where you show pictures of your fish make sure that's there too but say, here's the fish. I'll be back next week. I'm looking to get $3 a piece for them or whatever price you think. $3 a piece for a quarter size angel is probably the most you're gonna get unless it's something really rare. But if it's, you know, just a common marble, definitely you're not gonna get that unless it's, you know, veil tail and super fancy, I don't know. Um, but let's just say it's a nice koi angel. Three, four dollars a piece is probably what you're going to get because that's probably what they can buy them for, if not less. So let's say, because math is hard for me, you walk in with 10 angels, you want $3 a piece, you want $30 for that bag. But you say, here, I'll be back next week, see how they sell. If you have a good relationship, you could say, hey, could you put them in that, that front tank, you know, with the plants? I think, I think that they'd look really nice there. But if you're not, you really can't, so... And then come back in a week. And if they sold them all, more than likely they're going to give you the 30 bucks and want more. And boom. Done. They really haven't lost any money. Let's say they didn't sell them. They wouldn't have lost any money. You could have taken them back. Or just given them to them. Hey, they don't sell, no problem. Just, you know, when they sell, they sell. Right? What are you going to do with them? Um, and that, that works. Trust me, it works. Um, breeding for profit. How much money did I make? I'm not going to tell you. It's business. 
you don't talk about that kind of stuff. I can tell you that I do make over a hundred dollars a month from YouTube in gross. Don't forget taxes have to come out of that. You know, if I decide to buy any new uh, equipment, that that it comes out of that. So I have this mic here, which you can see, which uh, Corey uh, suggested I buy. Actually, I asked him a good lapel mic. And so I think the mic was like 20 something bucks. And then I needed a special adapter for my iPhone to make it work. That was like 20 something bucks. So, you know, there's another $45 say. So let's say I made a hundred dollars from YouTube. It's only 55 left this month and then taxes, you know, it's not a ton of money, but it's a little money. Um, I do make money selling fish. As I said, um, I don't know how much. And the reason why is if I buy a, tr a trio of guppies, let's say I buy a trio of guppies for 30 bucks and six months later, I have 30 fry that I sell for 300 bucks. Did I really make $270? No, because there's water and electricity and food and uh, any other meds I use. So I don't really know. I'll, I don't keep track of that because to me, that's just a cost of doing business for now. Uh, sure, if I had a store, I would uh, keep much better tabs, but I don't know. But when you're breeding for profit, you got to keep all that in, in mind, right? You buy the stock, you use the water, you use electricity to heat the water. Do you need any more equipment for these fish? Do you need more filters? If you're running filters that contain media, do you have to buy more media? What about the meds? Do you do you quarantine all my fish? I quarantine all my fish. I use the trio from Aquarium Co-op, and in most cases, I also use uh, either Levamisole or Fembendazole, whatever I have, um, just as a precaution. I, I don't want to sell sick fish. Um, it's not true that most get it, but if I see something that looks out of the ordinary, that looks like they could have some sort of internal parasite that the uh, general cure didn't catch, I'll hit them up with the Levamisol usually. Um, so all that accounts for cost. That, that all that eats into your gross profit, right? Um, what else? Nets, shipping costs, bags. Um, all that costs money. You know, the if you ship fish, the boxes you get from, from the post office are free, but packing material, heat packs, bags, you know, do you have advertising like stickers? Do you put a live fish sticker on the box? All that is cost, right? So I don't really know. I, when I started this, I wasn't really thinking that like that, and it would be pretty difficult to start figuring that out. I could do it if I had time, but if I had time, I wouldn't be going down to three videos a week, or from three videos a week to two videos a week. I'm rambling, sorry. Breeding for profit, how to make money. It's hard. It's not, it's not easy. You know, you're not gonna, you know, get a pair of discus and start breeding and make $20,000 in one month. That just doesn't happen. I mean, some people say it does, but if it does, it's really, really rare. Um, I think that's about it, folks. So just to recap. The relationship at the local fish store, if that's where you're gonna sell your fish is very important. Good quality product, also important. If you go to your local fish store and you sell them guppies or, or any fish and those fish are sick, they're, never, they're not gonna buy from you again because they can do that from their supplier <coughs> that may or may not give them money back. So another thing, do you have a guarantee? If you sell your fish to a local fish store and they all die, will you replace them? I don't know if you can afford to do that if you have a small operation. Um, it's probably the right thing to do depending on the situation, but again, you gotta figure that out ahead of time. Or if the problem comes up, you just gotta, you just gotta do it. I think that's about it, folks. I know I've said that before, but that's it. So listen, next year, Starting next year, or starting actually today, only two videos a week. They're gonna be on uh, Wednesday and Friday. Um, and hopefully that'll give me enough time to 
give you some better looking content, come up with some better ideas. And that's that. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Merry, Happy Kwanzaa. I don't know if there are any other holidays I'm missing, and you know I don't, I don't care. So, if you want to buy any fish from me, uh, please check out my website, www.michaelsfishroom.com. You can email me at michaelsfishroom at gmail.com if you have any questions. Um, if you're interested in Fish Freaks Plus fish food, which is pretty much all I feed in the fish room, Go to fishfreaksplus.com. Tyler's running, uh, I think, 20% off the entire website. You can use, uh, I forget what the promo code is, MFRXmas, something like that. Go there, but he's got a, a, a promo code splashed all over the place. I'll find it. I'll put it down here. Um, what else? If you're looking for a good forum to, uh, to learn about fish, PRAAquatics.com. That's uh, Ryan Anderson, Papa Rhino's uh, forum and website, and it's it's pretty good. The guys there are, are really smart and nice. And um, if you're looking to breed corals, corals. If you're looking to breed rams, uh, Coral Bandit is part of that um, forum, and he's he breeds some really nice rams. So check it out. What else? I think that's it. Have a great Christmas. Hello, fishy folks. Happy Sunday fun day to you and Merry Christmas. It is Christmas Eve. I am in my basement fish room and um, I was I was moving tanks around. Um, you know get working on the renovation while I can and uh, I decided I was I, uh, all right fishy folks <clears throat> <coughs> Merry Christmas fishy folks hope everyone's doing well on this Christmas Eve <clears throat> this year Christmas is on Sunday which means we have a long weekend or we had a long weekend or I don't know what it means all right fishy folks Merry Christmas it is Christmas Eve and uh, as I told you in the last couple of videos I'm having a hard time coming up with new content which is one of the reasons why I will be going down to two days a week starting now um, you know if I throw an extra video in there it's just a bonus consider it you know getting an extra large french fry at McDonald's going through the drive-thru or something silly I don't know there's something on my glasses and it's really annoying fixed all right good morning fishy folks happy Sunday fun day it's also Christmas Eve beards getting a little itchy folks Good morning, fishy folks. That couldn't be any less good. All right, fishy folks. Want to say Merry Christmas and uh, Happy New Year and all that good stuff. And I got nothing. Good morning, fishy folks. Hello, fishy folks. Happy Sunday fun day and Merry Christmas. It's Christmas Eve. Uh, me and the family are going to uh, a little um, local theater called the, I think it's called the, the Pittman Theater. It's in Pittman, New Jersey. Anyway, looking forward to going and seeing some Christmas spectacular play. They always do a great job there and it's fantastic. Anyway, wasted time. Hello, fishy folks. Happy Sunday fun day to you and Merry Christmas. It's Christmas Eve. It's Sunday, as I just said, Sunday fun day. You think after almost 300 videos, I would know the day of the week and stuff. No. Nope.